My name is Gavin Flickinger. I uh, belong to Karen and Edward Flickinger. I'm the oldest fourth grandson. And I'll be speaking on behalf of my brother, Sarah Flickinger, and my sister, Carrie Diana, and their families. Today is a happy day for our family. It's a happy day because Bob is going where she always wanted to go. But our grandfather and her angel, the aptly named Seraphim Pope. If you look at Bob's life as a story, then the central plot really is that of a love story. Bob and Teto produced a very loving family through their two daughters, Patty and Karen. Although Bob loved her family very much, our grandfather was her heart and soul. When he passed away many years ago, a big part of her was gone. Our family can all take great comfort in the fact that Bob and Teto are together for eternity, and I suppose that that's all one can truly hope for in life. I'd like to tell you a couple stories of Bob. First is her introduction to this country, and the second is her introduction to me. Or at least the first time I can remember meeting her. And I'll close with a joke. <laughs> Olga Pope was born Olga Popov. She spent her first ten years in the former Macedonian portion of Greece, which she often referred to as the old country. She arrived in this country, like many immigrants, in New York City. Upon her arrival, customs agents began the Americanization process. Spiro, her brother, became Charles, and Olga became Elizabeth. Her brother gladly accepted the new moniker, but Baba refused, citing the fact that she had been named after a beloved aunt. Olga re remained forever Olga. It's a story of which I'm extremely proud. Baba stood up for herself as a youngster when she knew she was right, and she wouldn't let someone change her life. My earliest, me my earliest childhood memories are of Baba. She truly epitomized what it meant to be a grandmother, or Baba, in the best sense of the word. Kind, loving, patient, gentle, and most importantly, in our family, head chef. <laughs> I spent my early years living with my parents and my brother Gar, sorry Carrie, in Cleveland. I must have been about three or four years old when my mom let me know that she and my father would be leaving for a short trip and that my brother and I would not be traveling with them. Needless to say, this caused great trepidation on my part. My parents were central to my limited world and I had yet to experience life without them around. My mother assured me that I would be fine. I had my brother, and besides, two people named Baba and Dedo would be watching us. I didn't know what a Baba and a Dedo were at the time, <laughs> but they sounded exotic and scary. <laughs> Mom assured me that I had, in fact, met them before, although I could not recall. Upon their arrival, Mom and Dad made a stealth exit that I clearly missed, and I was left with my brother and with Bob and Dad. Bob was the one that took charge. At the time, I fancied myself as an expert in the field of cookies, and I immediately offered my assistance when Baba suggested that we make some. It was like she read my mind. We had a cutting board that pulled out of some shelving in the wall, and Baba began to cut the prepackaged cookie dough. So far, so good, I thought. <laughs> this Baba creature is not too bad. <laughs> I began telling her that I couldn't wait for the cookies to come out of the oven as I was so excited to eat them. And then Baba did something for my three or four year old self that was what it must have been like when Edison created the first light bulb or when the first atom was split. <laughs> she told me that we didn't have to wait and that the cookie dough tasted pretty good on its own. <laughs> she ate a little bit before me and then gave me my own piece. Needless to say, I was amazed. I had never tasted anything that tasted so good. 
Like a sucker, I had been eating my mother's baked cookies for the previous couple of years. It was like Baba had shared some great secret, secret with me, and it was in that instant that I loved her. Thus officially began my relationship with the Baba. I would like to leave you with Baba's favorite joke. She was a terrible joke teller, but she didn't know it. Tyler and I would always make her tell this joke and then laugh along with her when she would incorrectly deliver the punchline or get confused with some minor point in the lead up. This joke is not very funny, so please don't feel like you need to laugh. The joke goes like this. There was a magician and a parrot on a cruise ship. The magician and parrot entertained every night and the parrot Having worked with the magician for years, knew every trick. Com upon completion of every trick, the parrot would tell the audience, it's hidden in his pocket, or he cupped it in his hand. One day, in the middle of the cruise, the ship, that, the ship had an accident and sank. The magician found a piece of driftwood for himself and the parrot. For four days and four nights, they were lost at sea together, and the parrot had a pensive look on his face and didn't speak. Finally, the magician asked him what was wrong, and the parrot said, I've worked every cruise ship with you this side of Antarctica. I know every trick you ever pulled. You gotta tell me, how did you make that big cruise ship disappear? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Baba. Send Dano our love. Wherever you are, I'm sure there are cookies and parrots. <laughs> As usual, Gavin's always a tough act to follow. <laughs> I was actually telling Gavin, I'm, I'm Tyler Hardy, I'm Patty and Barry's youngest son. And as Gavin said, I'll be speaking on behalf of my brother Trey's family and my sister Trisha's family. I was telling Gavin, as we were sitting over there, I said, it's kind of a change from when we were all up here 14 years ago with Dutto's funeral. I had something prepared and Gavin winged it. And uh, now Gavin had something prepared and I'm going to try and wing it myself. For those of you that know my grandmother, you also know that I was part of the family that grew up here in Lima, Ohio. I always had, I was fortunate, I always had both of my grandparents um, you know, a couple miles away, and I guess as a child, didn't realize how spoiled I was to be able to spend so much time with my Bob and Dutto. I don't have a lot of stories that would make sense to you all, but there are some things that Bob always said to me that I've never been able to get out of my mind. I hope to pass along to my children and grandchildren to come. And I hope that one day on my deathbed I don't forget the things that she taught me. One of the most important things she ever said to me was that everything happens for a reason. And as a five and six year old kid who just wants a G.I. Joe, it's really hard to understand that, that reason is the right reason. But as a 34 year old man, now has a wife and just put his last grandparent into the ground. You need to understand those things. She was born in a country that doesn't exist. She died in a country that she's made her own and she traveled thousands of miles to get here. As Gavin said, she was defined enough to not take the name that was given to her, but she was smart enough to realize when she was being sold. That specific example was my grandfather, who said to her, Hey, things have been going really well. I'd like, it, like to take you to meet my parents. And she said, Listen, I'm a lady. I don't go traveling anywhere with just any man without being engaged. <laughs> she knew his tricks from the very beginning. So in true Dutto fashion, he came back the next day 
with a medal that he'd won in diving and said, here, now we're engaged. <laughs> so began the illustrious family that got us all here. Um, as I grew up, my grandmother ceased being a grandmother. She became a friend, and she was my buddy. She was my first best friend, and she was the one that I ran to even when my mother was right there. As I grew up and went away to college, I didn't let a week go by without talking to her, and most days I would usually call her, even more so than I called my parents. As we got older and started moving out on in our life, the one thing she always said is that, you know, this is hard, and I understand you don't want to do it, but you have to. You have to keep moving forward, and you have to keep moving on. And as a woman who came here as an immigrant, spoke multiple languages, graduated from high school at the age of 21 because they didn't think that she was going to succeed in school because she wasn't born in this country. She had two beautiful children, six grandchildren, 12 great-grandchildren, and one great-great. She was constantly moving on. It's been 14 years since my grandfather passed away. I thought it was sweet that on Wednesday of Ash Wednesday last week, she went to heaven to be with him for their first Valentine's Day in 15 years. I just want you all to know that you're in this room because you meant something to that woman and you all mean something to our families for coming here and sharing in this experience with you. We loved our grand grandmother, and I think it's very apparent. And I just wanted to say thank you. And good night, sweet Papa. Oh.